In this video, I'm going to go over the differences between woodworking and metalworking tools and what not to show up with to your first welding job. So there are many tools out there that are made just for metalworking or just for woodworking exclusively, and I'm not going to really get into those. An example would be like a welder versus a nail gun. For this video, I'm going to go over the tools that have a direct comparison on both sides starting with hammers. Most of my experience comes from a motorsports background working in NASCAR. So I look at metal fabrication through the performance slash custom fabrication lens. I showed up to my first metal fabrication job with zero professional experience with a hammer that looked like this. I was immediately met with laughs and was asked if I was planning to build houses. Instead of a claw hammer, which has this long claw back made for pulling nails, the basic metalworking hammer is called a ball peen hammer, and it looks like this. Some people call it a machinist hammer, but either way, the flat side of the hammer is pretty much the same as a claw hammer. It's hard, flat, and made for hitting things. The other side of the hammer is rounded and called the peen. Flat side, besides just beating or bending metal, works well for striking punches or chisels, and then the peen side can be used for surface hardening, rounding off edges of pins and rivets, it also works well when there's just a small area that you want to get into and strike just the point because it's more focused. There's also a bunch of other specialized types of metalworking hammers. These all have different uses like shrinking, stretching, smoothing, and just moving metal in different ways and getting into really tight areas. They are often used alongside with a bag or a die, especially when you're working with sheet metal. There are some hammers though that are used on both the metal and woodworking sides, and these would be fine to bring to either shop, like the dead blow hammer or the sledgehammer. Next up is clamps. I'd say the most common type of clamp for metalworking is the C-clamp, both the standard type and the vice grip style. You could use either of these in woodworking, but they have a hard metal feet usually that usually aren't huge and could easily leave an imprint on the wood. Some, like this vice grip style C-clamp, have no feet so they can more easily fit in a tight area or hold just a specific spot, but these two would very easily mark up wood. The trend in wood clamps lately, in my opinion or what I've observed, has been an all plastic and rubber combination or maybe some type of metal mix in there, but usually plastic with a large foot that can clamp firmly but not leave marks. Most of these won't provide the clamping force needed to hold heavy pieces of metal, and even if they could, they aren't really designed to withstand the heat of something that needs to be grounded, welded, or recently was welded. I wanted to take a quick break and ran over here to my garage to tell you about this video's sponsor, which is WD-40 brand, and more specifically, WD-40 specialist white lithium grease. This stuff's great. Um, on the back of the can, all kinds of uses for this stuff, hinges, gears, sprockets, outdoor hinges, latches, overhead door tracks, which is what we're gonna be doing today, pulleys, cables, guide rails. It's really good on any heavy duty metal to metal contact. So we're gonna be going ahead and applying this to all my garage door, anything that moves metal to metal, everything here. We wanna get it good and shaken. It recommends 20 to 30 seconds. And the can comes with this nice smart straw that allows you to spray in two ways, wide or narrow, to control where you spray. I'm gonna go all the way down this track because that's where a lot of the load is carried. And then even around all the pivot points, see all this stuff moves and it's all metal on metal contact. So I wanna do all these hinges and then all the roller axles. WD-40 Specialist White Lithium Grease provides next level metal to metal lubrication and helps ensure fewer reapplications over time. So I know this is a little bit intensive right now, but I'm not gonna have to do it often. I definitely wanna make sure I get the center track because that's another high load area with metal on metal contact. So thanks again to WD-40 brand for sponsoring this video, especially the WD-40 Specialist White Lithium Grease. I know it's really gonna extend the life of my garage doors. And now back to the video. Now say you need to cut some large holes. For metalworking, I kind of hate hole saws because they seem to wear out fast. Even if you lubricate them while cutting, maybe I've just been using junk or I spin them too fast, I don't know. Um, I'm sure there's some good ones out there though. I'll tell you what I like in a minute, but if you are looking at a hole saw, that is out of the package so there's no way to read it. An easy way to tell if it's made for metal is if it has small fine teeth, kind of like a hacksaw, and a wood saw would have much larger teeth and less of them. If you have a hole saw that says it's bimetal, you can probably use it also on wood. But if you have one that says it's just for wood, you can't use it on metal. Usually the biggest side effect of using a saw blade or a hole saw that's designed for metal but you're using it on wood is it's gonna take a lot longer to cut and it's gonna generate a lot more heat. 
so much that sometimes you can actually burn the wood. Now, if I personally have to cut a large hole in a piece of metal, I prefer a rotor brooch. Just looking at it, it resembles a hole saw, but it's usually made out of a much better hardened material and the cutting teeth are actually ground instead of stamped like a hole saw. For sheet metal, you can also use a unibit or a step bit and cut some pretty large holes with them too, depending on the size of the bit. It starts by cutting a small hole, then it actually steps its way up to the hole that you're actually trying to drill. Now, if you need to cut your metal, you definitely don't want to use something that's designed for wood for this. Same rule, I'd say, applies to saw blades as it does to hole saws. You can cut wood with a metal blade, but not the other way around, and it's probably going to be really slow and build up a lot of heat. The three most common ways that I can think of to cut wood would be a skill saw, a miter saw, or a table saw. All three of these pretty much use the same type of circular blade with teeth. In the closest thing in for metal that I can think of would be a chop saw with its large abrasive disc. This works fine, but it throws off a huge amount of sparks and the disc gets smaller as you use it. In recent years, companies have come out with new large metal cutting discs that more resemble their wood cousins. These use either cutting teeth or some kind of an abrasive edge that doesn't shrink when you use it and it can still be ran on high speeds of a chop saw. Another popular way to cut metal is the horizontal bandsaw. This is my favorite way and usually allows for more degrees of cutting on larger pieces. Horizontal bandsaws can be used to cut wood and I think they often are in certain applications, but even with the right blade, I don't think it would be as fast in the normal application as any of the circular saw options mentioned before. Then there's a piece of cutting equipment that metalworking and woodworking share, which is the vertical bandsaw. This is a very handy piece of equipment and can be used to either cut metal or wood if you have the right blade. I'd say the only caveat is that maybe you have a very light duty horizontal bandsaw, you might prematurely wear out the guides or rollers by cutting metal on it often. Now for measuring options, obviously a tape measure is the way to go, but I'd say for metalworking, you're gonna usually want one that looks more like this and not like this. One big difference in woodworking versus metal when you're measuring is a lot of metal is measured in thousands of an inch or fractions of a millimeter. So for that, you're gonna need either a digital or dial caliper to get that precision. As far as your work table, which if you're going into a job, they're already gonna have this taken care of, but if you're setting up your own shop to do some metalworking, then your table really should have a metal top, especially if you want to weld. Not only will it not burn from sparks or heat coming from the part that you're working on, but your part also doesn't have to be directly clamped to with the ground clamp in order to weld on it. You can attach the ground clamp to the table top, and as long as the part is touching the top, then it will weld fine. Working with metal parts, even if you're not welding on them, is going to damage a wood top pretty fast. In some situations, you might want this because a wood top won't cause damage or scratches to a metal part. So maybe both is the best. For drilling holes, I think most drill bits are pretty much the same. Some special wood bits do have a little brad point on the end that is kind of like a little spur and it helps point the drill bit right in the center and then it has little wings that get the whole cutting process started. These work great for wood, but you definitely wouldn't want to use them on metal. When you are drilling into metal, some kind of cutting fluid will generally increase the life of your drill bit, but will also make a mess. This is another reason why the metal top table is ideal as wood would absorb any kind of cutting fluid. Another difference in equipment is the way dust collection is done. There are a lot of great systems for collecting sawdust when you're woodworking but you wouldn't want to use these for metal sparks as they typically aren't designed to handle red hot sparks flying into them and you could cause a fire inside the machine. A downdraft table is common for grinding or cutting metal on and if you're trying to collect the dust and sparks. Grinding tables usually for metal have a kind of like a metal oven hood kind of filter in them that won't burn when sparks pass through it. Even though it technically wouldn't hurt the equipment if you cut wood on top of it, I don't think, you wouldn't want to do this because then you're putting something inside the machine that could actually catch fire when you go back to throwing sparks in it. And the last little bit is how we're going to put all these marks for all this cutting we're going to do. If you're used to working with wood, I'd say a pencil is pretty common for marking your cuts or maybe even a chalk line, but a pencil or even a pen won't really work well on metal. To mark your measurements on metal, you're going to want something like a Sharpie, which is more commonly used, or even a scribe. And that's it for the very basics of metal versus woodworking tools. If you have any specific questions or want more details about a tool, let me know down in the comments. I'm Justin Voss. Uh, I make welding and fabrication videos here on YouTube. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.